Well, one of the virtues of coming to, to uh, church on Easter Day is you get to hear the shortest sermon of the year because that's the tradition among us. We want to get you out and having fun this afternoon. And the other thing, that's the good news. The bad news is you have to live with one very bad pastor joke to start things off. See, and some of you have heard this one before, so I apologize again. So here it is. It's a weekend morning, and Mom has, her, has made her kids their favorite breakfast, pancakes. She has her 14-year-old teen son, Rocky, and a little 8-year-old boy, Bobby. So as they, they polish off the pancakes, in the end it gets down to just one pancake left on the serving plate. So Mom decides, hmm, this can be a teaching moment. And so she says to them, boys, you know, if Jesus were sitting here, he would give the last pancake to his brother. And there was silence. And then Rocky, the 14-year-old, sighed and rolled his eyes and said to his brother, all right, all right, Bobby, go ahead. You be Jesus. So what do pancakes have to do with Easter morning and the empty tomb and Jesus and Mary Magdalene? Actually, it turns out just about everything. We all know this beautiful moment when, when Mary turns up before dawn at the tomb with precious oils, precious oils to properly anoint Jesus' body after his hasty placement in the tomb on Friday. She finds the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. And after Peter and John are summoned, they find the tomb empty, but they, they leave immediately for home. They don't understand. That leaves Mary standing there, crying. But when she looks inside the tomb, she sees two angels who ask her why she cries. When she turns to exit, she doesn't recognize that man standing there. But when he says her name, Mary, she knows instantly. And when she says to him, Rabboni, teacher, Mary becomes the first Easter Christian. Up until that moment, she didn't end un understand any more than Peter or John that Jesus had to die and rise again to conquer death. Now, poor, I feel sorry, poor Mary, she had come to the tomb that morning expecting to touch Jesus' body, anointing it, a man that she truly loved, her teacher. She, wants, she reaches out, she wants to make sure her eyes are not deceiving her, and it's really him. But when Mary reaches to touch Jesus, he says, do not hold on to me, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the Lord. Well, I, I used to think that this was a very abrupt reaction to her love. But then I looked a little further. Those words in, in Greek that we just said in English, mehatu, have a much deeper meaning than do not touch that we say in English. They're, in Greek, they're an imperative not to cling to someone as they did in the past. Like Mary, we want to hold on to Jesus like it was in the good old days, for things to be the same between us. We want to own Jesus. A lot of Christian religions like to have exclusive rights. But this Easter morning, there's no going back. Not then, and not now in 2023. Jesus is telling Mary and us, the lesson time is over. It's time for us to show God how we have learned the lessons he taught us. We need to start demonstrating to God that we listened and we learned. Now, 
we are the ones who will become the incarnate spirit of Jesus in our own lives. And when we do, we'll remember different scenes from our time with Jesus. You know, the time that he, Jesus didn't re reject the homeless, but he said he was homeless too. Accept others humbly, like Jesus. That when we trust in God, like Jesus did when he fed the 5,000 people, somehow God will give us the resources we need to share. Don't be afraid. Share like Jesus. And while no self-respecting first century Jewish, Jewish man would have spoken to that woman at the well, because she was a foreigner and of another faith. Jesus did, he, and he gave her living water. Acknowledge those of other faiths and cultures like Jesus. Jesus told of this, us the story of the prodigal son and a father who forgives everything so that we see others around us as our family. And in our own family, we accept all, no matter where they are at the, the, that point in their lives. Be a loving parent like Jesus. When Jesus returned after the death of his friend Lazarus and comforted his family and raised Lazarus, Lazarus as a preview to what Easter morning would be like, he comforted the people grieving. Be the comforter, like Jesus. Even, and even after being betrayed, mocked, beaten, and crucified by humankind, Jesus told God, Father, forgive them. Be a human being who lets Jesus live in you and be visible in the way you live. Easter isn't just a nice, nice story, it's a real story. I'm convinced it's a real story. And so my Easter wish for you is that you find your well-deserved joy today, because this day is supposed to be about joy. And maybe even a little bit during our Easter egg hunt, somebody might share their candy. You never know. I firmly believe that Jesus' second coming that people talk about is not going to be all thunder and clouds and trumpets. I believe Jesus' second coming started the day of the first Easter disciples, when they started acting more like Jesus in their everyday lives. And it's happening right now. If we let Jesus use us as his instruments. So on this Sunday morning, and always, with or without that last pancake, go ahead. You be Jesus. Amen. Amen.